Cleaner Market and congratulations, you have just purchased the Mila CX-1 Blizzard Cat and Dog Canister Vacuum. I love this vacuum, I'm really partial to white vacuum cleaners, so I'm surprised I don't already own this by myself. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna give you a quick little overview. I am going to tell you what you should have and um, then I'm gonna go a little bit more into depth on what all of those components do and then I'm gonna show you how to assemble and use all of these things that are on the table. So take this time to go and unbox everything. Um, your canister should already look just like this, but you should have your hose, your wand, this turbo tool, your carpeting attachment, your hard flooring attachment, and you should have three cleaning accessories. So why don't you just take this time, make sure you have everything here. If you don't for some reason have one of these components, please reach out to me. You should have three of these manuals. One is gonna be for your canister, one is gonna be for your electric power head, and the other is gonna be for this um, handheld turbo tool. So take this time, make sure you have everything here. Please reach out to us via chat, um, the phone, or an email if you don't have something that you see right here. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into depth of everything that is on this table. So this is your electric telescoping wand and how it telescopes is there's a little button on the back of your wand and you're gonna press that button and then you can extend it to any desired length. So this is really good if you're trying to get, you know, clean your ceilings, any cobwebs that are up there or if you're trying to get low or in a very tight space, this is gonna be a, a very big lifesaver for you. And then you have your three cleaning accessories. You should have your natural bristle dusting brush, um, your crevice tool, and your upholstery tool. So in addition to these three cleaning attachments, you also have, I love this tool. This is the um, handheld turbo mini and it has a spinning brush roll. So this is really gonna be good on stairs. If you have stairs, any upholstered surfaces that you have your, in your home, and it's really good in cars. And then you have your parquet hard flooring attachment. So on the other side of your attachment, you have these bristles of varied lengths. So this will dust and vacuum your hard flooring. So you never have to, to sweep again. It's very nice. And then it has the parquet feature. So it basically just turns on a dime. So getting around the edges of table legs or around furniture up close against your baseboards, it's gonna be, you're gonna love it. So then you have this big guy. So this is your electric carpeting power head. So this has five height adjustments and you can clean any pile carpeting, even soft carpeting or that ultra plush thick pile carpet, it's gonna be really, really good. So if you're standing behind your electric head as I am, you're gonna see these two levers the one on the right hand side, if you're again behind, is going to be your height adjustment. So if you tap your foot, um, it's gonna either go from one to five or five to one. So level one is gonna be the closest to your carpeting and level five is gonna be the furthest away. So what I always recommend is you start on level five, work your way down. It should be very seamless to push your carpeting attachment over your carpeting. You should not be struggling and, and pushing this thing across carpeting. If you are struggling, you're probably on the wrong height adjustment or you may be on the wrong suction setting and I'll get to the suction in a little bit. So how you release your wand from the upright lock position because nobody wants to vacuum like this is you push this lever and then this is how you're going to release your wand and then you can turn your carpeting attachment in any direction that you choose. So that's a um, little bit about your power head. And then if you would like to see, this is what the underside of that head looks like. There is also a silver sticker on this. This is a serial number for this head itself. So you'll notice that this head has a serial number, this one does, and then your vacuum has its own special serial number. So. I'm gonna show you how to locate that right now. So on the back side of your vacuum, you're gonna have this little silver sticker. And the reason I'm showing you this is because if you need to get a replacement for your vacuum or you need to do some warranty aspects, it's really good to know where your serial number is, your model number is, and the name of your vacuum cleaner. So
So on this silver sticker, you're gonna have your serial number. It's gonna start with a zero, zero slash and a nine digit number. That is your serial number. Then the model number is gonna start with an S and it's gonna be fo um, followed by letters or numbers or a combination of both. So that's gonna be on the bottom side of your vacuum. And then on the front side, below your suction dial and below the Mila logo is going to be where the name of your vacuum is. So this really helps us help you when we know exactly what model vacuum you have. And we can do that by either the name, the model number, and also by the serial number. So little trick of the trade right there. That's where you find your serial number. Okay, so on the front portion of your canister, you have a few buttons, and I'm gonna go over those real quick right now. So this button with the circle and the line through it, that's your power button. So once you plug in your machine, push power, your machine's gonna turn on. The button opposite of that is um, your cord winder. So when you pull out your cord and you're ready, you know, you've turned off your vacuum, unplugged the machine, and you're ready to wind up your cord, you press this button and the cord just goes straight into the body of the canister, which is really nice because you never have to worry about winding a cord again. Um, and then now you, we're going to look at this dial in the middle. This is your suction setting. So it's I don't know what suction, suction setting your um, vacuum is gonna come on. Most of them come on max, but some of them come on minimum. So minimum would be if you turned your dial all the way to the left, and that would be if you're going to be cleaning any like drapery, um, very delicate furniture, um, very specialty cleaning things. Um, the next one is an area rug setting. Then you have your carpeting setting. Um, the next one is in your hard floor parquet setting. So I personally always recommend that um, you stay on the max suction setting because it's just gonna give you the deepest clean. So if you have your suction setting on max and then you have your correct um, height setting on your carpeting head, you should be able to clean anything. So if you're still struggling with your carpeting power head, you've played around with the height settings and you found a height that you seem to be working, but it's it's still a little bit hard to push, please make sure that you're just, um, we'll just do one dial down and that should be a ideal setting for your carpeting. So um, now I'm gonna show you where to put these little cleaning attachments. So this machine is really good because it has integrated tool storage. However, there is no storage for this dusting brush. So this you're just going to have to um, put probably along with this attachment as well. But the crevice tool and the upholstery tool, which are the most commonly used attachments, those are um, on the board of your canister, which is really nice. So we're going to put these here and those clip in just like that. If you can see, you have your upholstery tool and your crevice nozzle. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit about your filtration. So um, your machine comes with a lifetime HEPA filter, but you still need to be mindful of cleaning your filters because the as if you are mindful about cleaning your filters, your that is gonna put less stress on your vacuum motor, and then it's in turn gonna make your vacuum last longer. So how you get to your filters is you're gonna pull up by this handle and you're gonna pull this out. And then this is your dustbin. This is where gonna be where all the debris that you're collecting from your home or wherever you're cleaning is going to be captured. And then if you put it over the trash can, you press this orange button, all the debris is gonna pop out into your trash can, which is really nice. You don't have to touch anything. You don't have to breathe anything. Then you have this other filter and it looks just like this. It's a very strange shape, um, but this is all washable. So you can rinse this out and um, please make sure you're letting it dry completely before you put um, it back into your machine. Water is like the number one killer of vacuum cleaners. Um, so make sure that you are letting it dry for at least 24 hours before you're putting it back in your machine. And they do recommend you put it in direct sunlight. So. If you don't have direct sunlight because it's the winter, um, just make sure you're giving it a couple days to dry. So this is your other filter. This is your, your lifetime HEPA filter. And then it is enclosed in this round cylindrical looking thing. And to access your filter, you are gonna twist the top and you're gonna pull out. And then these are also washable as well. So you can rinse this off, rinse that out. And then again, make sure you're letting that dry completely. So to put it back in your canister, you're gonna 
push it away from you and you're gonna turn. So I'm gonna do that and it's hard to do it at a weird angle. So I apologize if you can't see this. And then you're just gonna snap it back in there like so. And then to put this one, you're gonna put this side away from you and then push that down. You're good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna show you um, a couple different things. Actually, I'm gonna turn this back around. There is a little reservoir in here. And if you want, you can slide your attachments in there, which is really handy if you um, have to go grab the door or you know have to stop cleaning because you have to pick up a toy that's in your way. There's also a reservoir here as well. You can attach your, your hard flooring attachment there as well. And it's really nice. You can wind your hose around the machine. It kind of compacts it a little bit, so it's really good for storage. So for your canister, we're going to attach your hose and then your wand, and then you have a variety of cleaning attachments that you can choose from um, at that point. So there's this side is what you're gonna connect into the top portion right here of your canister. I apologize, this hose is very new and kind of aggressive, so I'm gonna try not to throw the hose over the table. So you're gonna hear kind of a snap and you might have to push a little bit hard. That's just making sure that you have a really, really secure electrical connection because you want to power your carpeting power head. So that seems to like it like that. So we're gonna leave it right there and I'm gonna kind of wind this hose a little bit. So after you've connected your hose, there is a little X and an O on your handle so once you've connected all these pieces, the X is like, think of it as go, O is off. So that is going to make this power head turn on or off. So if this, if the spinning brush rolls aren't turning on this head, chances are you're not on the X. So make sure it's on the X. If you, um, you're probably wondering why they have the O option. If you have a rug with tassels or you have a delicate area rug that you cannot clean with a spinning brush roll, that O feature will just allow you to clean your carpeting with pure suction. So that's a really, really nice handy feature. So then we're gonna connect our electric telescoping wand to our handle. And then we can choose from a variety of attachments for space purposes. I'm gonna use this attachment. So you can see, you can telescope your wand if you need to get like the couch that's way over there, <laughs> something along those lines. And then you also have the option of, I should have showed you this before I attached the wand. You can attach your cleaning attachments to the base of your handle. You can also attach your handle to your carpeting power head directly like so. And to release this attachment, you would push down on this lever and pull up. And the reason I'm showing you this is some people like to vacuum their stairs with their electric power head. Some people prefer the air-driven lighter attachment for their stairs. So whatever is going to be your preference and you're going to find whatever you like and what works best for you. So that's the beauty of this. It's a pretty customizable. So then you can attach your hard flooring attachment and like how I store my canister is like this because I live in a smaller home, I need more compact. You can also wind your, your um, hose around as well. It's really nice. Um, or you can store it laying down wheel side on the ground and you can put um, your hard flooring attachment in the side reservoir too. So I hope this gave you a little bit of a, a how, what everything is in this box and how to use it. Um, if not, if you still have more questions, please reach out to us. We are really happy and here to help. I promise you we're, we're readily available. You can live chat us on our website. You can give us a phone call or you can also send us an email. We have live US-based customer service and um, we are really happy to um, talk with our customers and to hear what you need and anything that we're missing, we would love to help you with. So I'm Lauren with Vacuum Cleaner Market and happy vacuuming.